The National Association for the Education of Young Children has recently revised their position statement on developmentally appropriate practice. When we think about developmentally appropriate practice, we always start with the core considerations. Initially, when we thought about these core considerations, we talked about how knowledge must inform decision-making. And when we talked about how knowledge should inform decision-making, we were really thinking about what it is that we know about child development in general, um, what is it that we know about the development of an individual child um, that, that we've learned through our observations and interactions, um, and what we know about the child's culture and the beliefs and values of that child's family. And all of that is taken um, to help us to make decisions about what it is that we want children to know and be able to do, and thinking about what it is that we are going to do um, in the classroom or in our early childhood program, thinking about things like what materials we're gonna place in the environment, thinking about the planned experiences that we will have available for children, as well as thinking about our interactions and how we are with the child. And, and so we start with, with this piece around knowledge and then we move into um, goals and ensuring that goals are challenging but achievable. We wanna make sure um, that we are supporting children in moving to that next level of development. Um, but then we also wanna make sure that we are not um, challenging children um, in ways that cause frustration. And then we've talked about the importance of being intentional, right? And really thinking about how we are with children, right? And you can see how these all build upon one another. Now with our core considerations, um, the core of developmentally appropriate practice, when we look at this document, it, it is thinking about these three statements of commonality individuality and context. And all three of these are actually connected to this first point from the original core consideration. And so when I look at the actual statement from NAEYC, the title is now Core Considerations to Inform Decision-Making. And so really we are diving into what this really looks like with this first bullet, because we know that the second and third bullets around goal setting and intentional interactions really build off of that foundational knowledge. And so I want to take you through a framework, which I think will be helpful as we um, move through and talk about developmentally appropriate practice and what that means for curriculum. And so the framework that I want to introduce to you is something called the teaching cycle. And the teaching cycle really is at the center of everything that we do, just like developmentally appropriate practice. And there are a lot of similarities between these two frameworks. And so when we think about the teaching cycle, we begin with observation and assessment. And so as we are thinking about observation and assessment, there are several um, goals of this, right? Is that we really want to understand what it is that individual children know and are able to do. We wanna understand um, take into account what we know about child development in general. And we also want to think about the whole child, right? We want to think about the child through the perspective of um, their family, their community, their temperament, all of the different things that come together to really um, create this child um, and who they are and how they learn and, and what, what they are interested in and, and all of those pieces. The next step of our teaching cycle is our curriculum goals 
and planning. And so this is where we're really thinking about what it is that children should know and be able to do. This is where our curriculum comes into play. And we start thinking about the materials that go into the environment. We start thinking about the planned experience and we start thinking about our interactions. And then the last step is implementation of where you are actually taking your curriculum, you're taking your plans and you're implementing them. And this is where our teaching practices, our interactions, um, the power of how you are comes into play. And when we think about this, we really are thinking about it through the lens of a cycle, right? It's called a teaching cycle. And so we start with what it is that we know about children in general to then inform our decision-making about what it is that we want children to know and be able to do and, and decisions around our curriculum and planning. And then we take that and we actually implement those plans, right? Um, and, and so this is where we're thinking about our teaching practices, we're thinking about our interactions, um, we're actually um, placing those materials in the environment, we are facilitating children's play with those materials, we are extending their engagement, we are um, implementing those planned experiences, we are um, interacting with children in ways that supports their learning, that supports their language development, that's, that supports um, their persistence and their curiosity, right? Um, and, and so again, that's really where those teaching practices come in. And then while we are implementing, while we are interacting with children, while we are um, engaging, we are also observing, right? And you're gathering lots of really useful information in terms of how did that experience go? Were the children engaged? Um, did the children make progress towards the goals that you had set, right? Or did you find that um, the goal that you had set for an individual child was too challenging? and that the child became frustrated and maybe you have to make some adaptations, right? And so again, this is this cycle of where we're moving throughout these three steps. And so as we are implementing, we're moving back into observation and assessment and we're really being present with the children and observing what it is that they're doing um, and, and gathering data about the success of our planned experiences, of the materials we've placed in the, in the um, classroom or in your program. Again, those, those decisions around curriculum. And we're seeing whether we need to make adaptations, right? And so we move again, round and round the cycle. And so as we think about, well, what does this have to do with developmentally appropriate practice? So when we think about observation and assessment, we think about what it is that we know about child development in general. Um, what is it that we know about an individual child's development? Um, what do we know about culture and, and the impact that that has on, on who that child is? Um, what do we know about the whole child? Thinking about their experiences um, at home, thinking about their temperament, thinking about their interests, all of those pieces, right? This is really um, taking us back to that core consideration of knowledge must inform decision making, right? And now with this new um, position statement, we're going deeper and we're thinking about under the, the lens of knowledge, we're thinking about um, these statements of commonality. Right? And so understanding that current research and understandings of the process of child development and learning apply to all children um, and recognizing the uh, impact of social, cultural, linguistic, and historical context, right? Um, and, and so it states in the core considerations document, 
when considering commonalities in development and learning, it is important to acknowledge that much of the research and the principal theories that have historically guided early childhood professional preparation and practices have primarily reflected norms based on a Western scientific cultural model. Little research has considered a normative perspective based on other groups. So what this means is that the child development research that we are looking at, what we know about children's development connected to the domains and the subdomains, what is in the Virginia Early Learning and Development Standards, right? What it is that we know about child development has mostly been learned through research that has been done with white middle-class children in Western countries, right? So in the United States of America, in Europe, we don't have a lot of research that tells us what child development looks like, what those progressions are in other places, right? And so do we really know um, if our expectations around what children should know and be able to do are reflective of all children or just some children, right? Um, and, and so we really have to think about what are those common pieces, right? And so it may not be um, the exact benchmarks of when children know um, a specific thing or are able to do a specific skill, but understanding that in general, child development happens um, in a certain order or sequence, right? And, and so that's what's really helpful with our early learning standards, with the um, Virginia milestones and the foundation blocks is that it gives us that information, right? It helps us to look at the different domains and, and understand what development looks like um, and, and how it progresses. But we also have to recognize that, that this may be slightly different depending upon um, the child's culture and, and social context, right? And that takes us to this next piece of commonality or sorry, of individuality, right? Um, so that we really understand that diversity and the opportunities it offers to support all children's learning is so critical, right? And that as early childhood educators, that it is our role to recognize each child as an individual, as a unique individual with assets and strengths, right? And, and how is it that we are supporting each and every child within our classroom, within our program? And that we're thinking about that within the context of social and cultural um, experiences of each child, right? And not even that we're thinking about it within the context of the experiences of the child, but that we're also thinking about it within the context and the experiences of us, that as educators, we need to reflect on our own beliefs and values, um, on our own cultural and social experiences, right? And how that impacts our program and the beliefs and values and philosophy of our program and how we look at children's learning. And these are all pieces that we are going to be exploring um, throughout um, our conversation around curriculum, right? So when we look at the connections between the teaching cycle, between this, this framework and developmentally appropriate practice, when we start with observation and assessment, that helps us to think about that core consideration of knowledge must inform decision making. And now with our revised resources from NAEYC, we go deeper into this idea of knowledge informing decision making and talk about these three core considerations of commonality, individuality, and context. Then if we move to the next section of um, our teaching cycle and curriculum goals and planning, we can continue to think about, oh, okay, so observation and assessment is giving us this information around what children know, 
and are able to do, right? And again, we think about that within the context of commonality, individuality, and context, right? Now, under curriculum goals and planning, we're thinking about what it is that we want children to know and be able to do. So a key part of curriculum is setting goals around what we want children to know and be able to do, and then planning the materials, the experiences, and the interactions, right? Um, and, and so I'm getting a little bit messy here, but again, as we're thinking about curriculum goals and planning, we are thinking about, when we think about curriculum, materials, experiences, and interactions, right? And when we think particularly about goals, we are thinking about what it is that we want children to know and be able to do. And that decision is based upon what we know about individual children and what those children know and are able to do, which is based upon our general knowledge of child development and the domains of development, right? And then we move into the implementation. And when we move into the implementation, this is takes us back to that original concept of all interactions must be intentional, right? How you are with children, that we um, don't do things just because, that we have a reason, and, and that it really is, again, connected back to what it is that we know about children and those decisions that we made around what it is that we want children to know and be able to do, right? Um, and so we are being intentional in our interactions as we are implementing our plans in terms of those materials that are in the environment, the experiences that we have planned and our interactions, right? And so we are engaging with children, we are facilitating their play with materials, we are extending their engagement, we are um, supporting their learning by asking how and why questions. We are following their lead as implementing, as we are implementing those planned experiences. Um, really thinking about how it is that we support children's learning and engagement and development. Um, how we're supporting um, their language by asking questions, by repeating and extending what they've said, um, all of those different pieces that we talk about when we, when we think about teaching practices, when we think about the power of how we are. And, and so I think it's really helpful as we begin to think about curriculum, that we think about curriculum through the lens of developmentally appropriate practice because that really is the foundation of, of everything that we do. And then we think about it through the lens of this framework of the teaching cycle, right? And how we are continually moving from observation and assessment to curriculum goals and planning to implementation and then back into observation and assessment. 